Let's bring in former prime minister and leader of right-wing party, the new right, Naftali Bennett. He joins us now from Israel. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you so much. I don't know if you were able to hear the comments made uh, to Ben Wiedemann from uh, the, the Lebanese foreign minister. If you were, I'm curious your response. Well, first, I'd like to point out two corrections. Uh, the first one is that it's not Israel that's claiming that Hezbollah shot this rocket and murdered the 12 children. Uh, that's a fact that's been confirmed also by the United States in an official memorandum, uh, confirming that this is a Hezbollah rocket made in Iran, used by Hezbollah, and uh, they, Hezbollah, Nasrallah, uh, murdered the 12 uh, boys and girls. And now, uh, like any coward, he's uh, trying to hide that and deny it, but that's a fact. Uh, secondly, the Golan Heights is no longer an occupied territory. The United States of America recognized the Golan Heights as part and parcel of Israel, so it's an uh, integral part of Israel. As to your question, um, what we've had here is a, a war that has no uh, premise, no basis for it. Uh, this is not a two-sided war. Hezbollah uh, began attacking Israel on October 8th, has shot hundreds of rockets on Israel, Israeli kibbutzim and towns, killed dozens of Israelis, and now a couple of days ago murdered 12 children. So when one says the word escalation, we are already at full-blown escalation uh, that, that has been uh, produced by Lebanon. It is clear that such a severe attack cannot pass without a harsh response uh, from the Israeli Defense Forces. But a senior Israeli defense official is quoted as saying Israel wants to hurt Hezbollah, but does not want to drag the region into an all out war. In your view, what should that response then be if the ultimate goal is reestablishing deterrence, but not a full scale regional conflict or war? Well, I uh, beg to differ. I think we are already at a full-scale regional war. What do you call it when uh, Houthis from Yemen shoot rockets and kill an Israeli in Tel Aviv? When uh, Iranian proxies in, in Gaza, Hamas and Islamic Jihad, uh, kill hundreds of Israelis? When Hezbollah is shooting hundreds of rockets? When Iraqi militias and when Iran itself shoots hundreds of uh, missiles from Iran onto Israel? So we're already facing a regional uh, war. The key is to identify the source of, of the enemy. And the source of the enemy is Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran is at the basis of all of this. It's sort of like the head of the octopus. Mm -hmm. And I've been uh, advocating for a few years that we ultimately need to topple uh, this regime for our sake, for the sake of the region, for the sake of the Iranian people. I think uh, now that's uh, clear to everyone. They are at the basis of everything. Does that mean you're in favor of a full-scale war against not just Hezbollah? And when I say a war, obviously I mean of the scale that we saw in 2006, not what we've been seeing uh, in the North since October 8th. But you seem to be taking it one step further, saying Israel should go to war with Iran now. I'd say Israel is already at war with Iran. Iran has been shooting thousands of rockets through uh, Gaza, through Lebanon, through Iraq, from Iran itself, from uh, Yemen on Israel, um, but they are not paying any price. Now, I'm not suggesting uh, a specific action. I'm not going to delineate precisely what we need to do, but we need to understand that the head of the octopus of terror in the whole region, most of the terror in the Middle East, its source is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, those mullahs uh, who have a, a very clear ideology, it's an incompetent and corrupt regime. It will topple at some point, but I think America and Israel and the West need to uh, accelerate that, especially for economic sanctions, but not only. You said over the weekend uh, on CNN, quote, what we saw happen uh, on Saturday is the result of a feeble, weak policy of many words and speeches, but not enough action. The only way to stop this and deter our enemies is to fight back. So in a sense, uh, aside from Hezbollah, uh, are you also pointing the finger of blame at the current Israeli government? Well, it's no secret. I think, um, you know, Israel has lost a lot of its uh, deterrence. Uh, due to poor leadership. That's, uh, I think that's clear to everyone. Uh, when something is not working uh, well, 
you ultimately look for the leadership. We're going to have to fix that as well. But right now, we stand united uh, on the goal of fighting and, and ultimately weakening and toppling the octopus of terror, the head of the octopus, which is Iran. This is not something that happens in hours or days, but it's something that needs to begin uh, happening. But you you acknowledge that it is something Israel can't do unilaterally. And I'm not saying it, it, American boots on the ground, but I mean without U.S. support, whether it's providing more ammunition. And it comes at a time where, as you know, uh, there has been conflict between the two countries in terms of the time frame uh, that the United States has been providing certain weapons. Do you think the U.S. right now, as we're approaching an election, has an appetite for opening yet another front in the region right now? I think the way to um, prevent a full uh, blown war, um, uh, let's call it a kinetic war, with Iran is precisely by using the uh, softer measures of economic sanctions and diplomatic sanctions and other elements, and certainly not allowing billions of dollars to flow into this apparatus of terror. Um, it's something that we're going to need to do, uh, certainly with the current administration, with whichever uh, next president is elected in the United States. Because if we don't do it, the entire Middle East uh, will we'll go along the lines of uh, radical Iran, and that ultimately will hit all of the world, including the United States. If you don't uh, cut the, nip the terror in its bud, you're going to meet it on the streets of uh, New York and Washington. You know, I, I was living in uh, New York during 9-11. I remember that very day. I remember tens of thousands of people running away from those towers because when you don't nip terror at its source, it'll come and haunt you. Mr. Prime Minister, with all eyes on the North now, there are a lot of concerns about what this means, the status of a hostage deal and a ceasefire. As of a few days ago, it appeared that, that one was perhaps imminent. Now there are real concerns about the likelihood there. And I've just been looking over the past few months. I don't know if you've ever publicly stated how you feel about this specific deal. Do you agree with it? Is it something that the prime minister should have signed off on long ago? Or do you support how many view his process of delaying it? No, I uh, neither. What I believe is that uh, we're not reaching a deal because the pressure on Hamas is not strong enough. Uh, the, the war is being prosecuted at a very low intensity, let's call it 5 10% intensity, and you don't win wars when you're fighting at 5 to 10% intensity. Uh, when you have, a, let's say, a boxing match and your rival just got hit in, in his head, you, you have to go box him uh, and hit him until you get the, the knockout. Uh, but what we're doing is keep on turning it on and off, on and off, and that's not how you achieve victory. You have to have uh, the, the systematic consistency, and that's why we're not getting a deal, because we're not applying enough pressure on uh, Yichi Sinwar. Uh, but I, I do believe a good deal is attainable by applying that pressure. But this specific deal, or, or you think it, they should start from scratch? Because I, I know that you have spent a lot of time with hostage families. Um, I would perhaps argue even more time than the current prime minister has. And, and you know how the majority of them feel, and, and that is that they want their loved ones home now. Do you think whatever plan you're proposing would bring them home any sooner than the one that's already on the table? Well, I think uh, what I would do in this sort of situation is uh, simplify things for the military and for the whole uh, issue. I would say to Hamas, there's one deal, and the deal is that you raise a white flag, release all of the hostages and surrender, and in return, we won't kill you, but rather we'll put you on a boat and ship you out of here uh, like we did to the PLO uh, in Beirut in 82. Uh, that, that is what I would do, and then turn to the military, to the IDF, and say, you go ahead, uh, don't stop until we achieve this. Um, but you know when when you're IDF, hovering between two... You know, finally, and I'm, we're, we're just pressed for time, I'm just curious, because I haven't heard much from you on this specific angle, you know what the IDF and the military brass has been saying with regards to this deal, and that they think that Hamas has been weakened enough that a deal can be established, at least the first phase of it, and there's a real opportunity that the prime minister is not seizing on right now to, to bring home uh, at least some of the, the hostages who, who you know, are suffering, as you, as you know. 
Look, I'm, I'm not going to criticize uh, the prime minister for uh, or the military for any deal because it's uh, so sensitive and there's so many uh, dimensions in such a deal that, you know, it's, it's no, uh, um, it's, it's not a smart thing to stand on the sidelines and, and uh, give criticism. I'll back whatever uh, the government does. All I'm saying is that we need to press much harder uh, in order to achieve the deal that that is uh, you know been sort of running away from us for for the past four months. Okay, um, former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, thank you so much for the time.